Did y'all miss me? <laughs> so I'm super excited about this particular episode of my Success Spotlight Talk Show. I have an amazing longtime client on here for today. I have, a, I have a definitely amazing woman on tonight for you guys. Her name is Natasha Davis. She is the financial strategist. She's the financial freedom strategist, sorry. And she's going to help you guys get your, your finances as it pertains to credit all together we're going to give you guys some of the top secrets that's out there in the market right now and we have, have an awesome diagram before we get into that i want to make a huge special announcement uh, for an event that i'm about to actually have tomorrow tomorrow guys at 9 p.m eastern standard time that is 9 p.m eastern standard time i'm going to be hosting another pass cast and our topic is going to be amazing it's going to be about juneteenth so make Make sure you guys join us. I'm going to have Shoshana Cuevas, Lita Smith, Charmaine Cardin, Darlene Anthony, and the Natasha Davis on our Pass the Cat show. But it's going to start tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Periscope. If you want to know more information about that and register, put on over to CampbellSuccessNetwork.com right now, right this very second. Natasha, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you, you hear me? Music? Yeah, yeah. So Natasha, you're on the go today, love. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's been a while since you've been on my show. If you could just introduce yourself to everyone uh, so they can get to know who you are and what you do. Okay, well, my name is Natasha Davis, and I am your financial freedom strategist. I help women. Uh, reclaim and redefine their financial confidence by educating moves. That's right. That's right. So tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about six, six, six secret steps involved in preparing your credit. So, Natasha, if you could talk about, like, I always say, you could have done anything else. You could have taught anything under the planet. What brought you and led you to helping women with that financial freedom? What, what, what evolved the strategy side? Well, my own personal story. So, um, I still am, I guess. You can consider me a single mom. So I was a single mom with two young uh, kids. And um, during the time where I had to really be, uh, pay attention to what was going on with my credit was I had just gone through a divorce. I had gotten out of the military. My military income was cut in half. And I pretty much had to, you know, maintain the the living that we were used to, which wasn't really mm -hmm. hard. But throughout my time in the military, I jacked my credit up. And mm. for those of you who've been in the military, you know it's easy because you get paid on the first and the fifteenth. So you just figure, okay, well, I got money on the first and the fifteenth, so you know everything is good. But mm -hmm. I knew better. I I did know better. Um, because like I've told you before, my dad was the person who really taught me how important credit was. Um, yes. we, my dad counted every penny, like every penny. He didn't believe in credit. Um, he believed in saving and he believed in, he did some investing, but he was also a serial entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. the way that we grew up, it, he pretty much, he, he never talked to us about money. But we lived through it. So things mm -hmm. like him, um, I would have to read the electric meter. So we grew up in the country. So on the beginning of the month and the end of the month, I had to go read the meter. And yeah. so that pretty much gave him what the budget was going to be, you know, each month for the electric bill. And of course, it fluctuated from winters and summers. Yeah. But um, and then the other thing, too, is being a single mom, because. I really didn't have any help or resources. Um, yeah. I had to make sure I was in a a better place for my kids to be able mm -hmm. to give them what they needed. And I really saw yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you still hear me? Yep, I can still hear you. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so um, yeah, you're know, good. I, you're good didn't have that um okay I, I didn't have the resources or 
the support system. So I had to pretty much build it on my own. So like yeah. I said, I knew what credit could do. I knew how I could leverage it. So it was just a point of me getting it, getting my credit back to where it needed to be. And yeah. I did that on my own. I did go to a large credit repair company. Yeah, I will not call their names. You know, string me along. So it's like one one month they would only do one item. The next month they would do only one item. And I knew mm -hmm. that that wasn't the way it could be done. So I studied um, the credit laws. I studied, um, you know, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I studied, you know, what my consumer rights were. And I was able to increase my credit by over 60 points in less than a year's time wow. um, just by learning what I learned. So, and, and then I had so many um, friends and then, um, you know, that were in a, the same situation or a similar situation that I could help. And I just figured that that's something that people need. Like people need to understand their finances. They need to understand how they can leverage credit, that's but right. the responsible way, not the yeah. irresponsible way. Cause a, a lot of us unfortunately aren't taught how to leverage credit correctly. So we get ourselves in a lot of debt, a lot of debt. A lot, a massive and amount of it's debt. It's really not that hard. Yeah, it's really not that hard. You just have to know how to do it mm -hmm. and how to do it in a way, um, you know, to benefit you. You know, so. you know, I believe that financial literacy is something that has to be taught. And a lot of people assume and think that they can manage their financial portfolio or just their credit on their own you know i remember you know i didn't have the you know the the sort of like the platform that you had growing up my parents never taught me about credit um i see them i see them get money and then spend money and uh when i was just when i just turned 18 you know senior year of high school almost ready to grad, um start college that's when i started to get those you know, pre-application letters in the mail. I got, you know, getting pre-approved for this, Discover, MasterCard, you name it, you know? Uh, so you get sort of like plastic happy where you're like, oh my God, they're giving me money, you know, at a young age, you know, starting off in college. I was like, okay, well, I have a part-time job and I can still manage and cover and, and, you know, I get a paycheck every two weeks, so I'll just pay. But then, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you start to get all this, debt that, that's involved in there, there's there's a lot of shame sometimes of why people don't go to people because when they already get them and get themselves into a ditch to actually have somebody else look at all the damage they've done you know because we can't blame it on our parents at, at a certain point you know mm -hmm. um they've done there's a lot of shame for right. people to people open up and see all the credit issues especially if you're married and you, you, your husband's not honest about his debt uh, and two, I are actually about to make a big purchase mm -hmm. or something. You're like, wait a minute, when you was 19, a uh, creditor gave you a $10,000 credit limit? You know, that's, <laughs> speaking for myself, I couldn't believe that, right. you know, but that's what happened. And, you know, so it is, it, is people hide a lot of that credit repair. And, and, and in doing that, they actually, you know, as you know, it's a detriment to themselves. I always firmly believe that if you're trying to improve your credit or make Maintain your credit is something that you need always constant help doing because there's somebody like you because you do more than just credit repair you're helping people with their financial uh freedom financial literacy so they can if they are thinking to do a big project you know it, it's it's a whole entity if they think of starting a business there's so much to learn from that so i really commend you for being on the show today because a lot of women especially women of color uh needs to hear this information Right. So uh, thank you, LaShawn, uh, Dr. Carlene, Tamara, for hopping on. Those of you who have questions, feel free to ask on the live and make sure that you also share this out. So um, we have about, what, six secrets to talk to you guys about. And we have a diagram to show you all a little bit towards later on uh, that's going to help you guys sort of get like a 360 view of your whole um, financial portfolio. Right. So like I said, today's topic is about six secrets, six steps to um to repair your credit right and i know you and i tasha we talked behind the scenes about some of the challenges that you're seeing your clients are having initially when they come to you but the first question i have for you which is 
uh, one of the tips was assess your credit situation. What does that mean? Right. So that basically means that every month at the beginning or at the end of every month, you should be sitting down and looking at your finances. You should be, then you should look at, are you really living within your means? Because if you're not oh, living yeah. within your means, then you, you are definitely going to put yourself in a situation that, you know, could be detrimental to your financial um, health. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure, like I said, you're living within your means. It's basically what the what credit, you know, the um, assessing your credit situation is. Yeah. And then if you, you know, find that you are living paycheck to paycheck, then you need to look at what you are spending and how can you cut back. And you can do that with things like, you know, cutting back on um, your cable bill. Like I know when I was fixing my credit, I totally turned off my cable. Yep. And I just use like streaming apps because we were never really watching TV like that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we went from contract phones, um, you know, with the large um, cell phone companies and went to prepaid. And believe it or not, that saved me in itself like almost $250 a month. Yeah. Because you know how we get these phones and the phone is attached to your bill. And then you have all these extra franchise taxes and all this stuff. And I, I tell people, look at your phone bills, your cable bills, because there's so many different like taxes and different types of fees oh, yes. that you're paying that is, yeah, that is up a lot of your bills. So, um, you know, a lot of these um, pay as you go companies, you can um, connect your cell phone to those companies. Now, granted, you may have to pay for your phone outright, but in the long run, you're going to save money yep. by doing that. Um, things like taking pub public transportation versus driving all the time. You know, that cuts back on your bill. Call your um, insurance company and see if you have all the discounts that you are entitled to for your car insurance. Like there's that's so right. many different ways that you can cut back on your spending. So and that's what I tell my clients to do. Look at what you have going out. Look at what you have coming in and where can we cut costs so you can either take that money and save it or take that money and pay off debt i agree so you you strongly suggest then that first option for us to do is to look at what's coming out of our, our pockets or what's coming out of our bank account and see how we can cut back on some things right yep. yeah absolutely i'm sorry what did you say um natasha I, I say yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, yes, and that's that's something that even for a mindset thing, because you, I know we're not talking about mindset tonight, but even what you do, it falls into the whole mindset piece. So people are like, oh my god, I got to get a prepaid phone, I got to make all these adjustments, but you got to look at it as the long term, the long term. And now with this whole COVID and you know people being you know was in quarantine, people are now really starting to assess how much money is really going out. Which is and like you said, this this is something that doesn't it shouldn't happen once. It should be something that's every single month. You should be assessing your credit situation, right? Sorry, it's a little bit of a delay, guys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, good, good, good. So let's go to number two, yes, which, is, which, which is which is. Yep, I can hear you. You're good. Uh, the second point for this evening is to dispute um, inaccurate credit report information. Now, how does that work? So basically, what's one free credit report um, from each credit bureau a year? Well, now it's, I think it's every month now because of COVID. So you should be able to go and pull your credit reports and look at them. And what you need to do yeah. is review them to make sure that the information on there is accurate and there are no errors. Um, mm -hmm. So it's things like, you know, looking at the account. Does that account belong to you? Is the balance correct? Or is the payment history correct? And if any of that type of information is incorrect, then you can dispute that information with the credit bureaus to either correct it or to remove it. 
And also part of what you do is you help people um, to even with the type of verbiage they can use to send out to these creditors to dispute certain things on their report, correct? As, um, with some accounts, like for instance, like charge-offs or collections, if, if your accounts are in collections, you want to be careful about the verbiage that you use. Um, yes, that is and you want to be careful as far as like the, the statute of limitations because you can kind of wake up an account that should be falling off soon and not to say that it doesn't belong to you but if, if but if it's reached the point where they should no longer be reporting it you don't want to kind of like what we call wake it up and then it could um you know start like a, a court proceeding um oh yeah so you, yeah, yeah so you have to you have to be careful about how you dispute things because mm -hmm. even if you don't you know tell them exactly what you want they're they're going to do what they want to do because you have to yeah. understand the credit bureaus are they're a business they're not really on the consumer side no they're not they're a business so and the, and yeah. the longer that you're in debt it's actually good for them because i, I know you mentioned before that they can add fees on there so even if you do consolidate, a lot of times you're spending more than the actual initial charge that you originally had on that account. So I totally understand. See, that's another reason why you guys need somebody like Natasha to help you guys with that. It's definitely important. Which brings me to the third point is to pay down your debt. You know, where should I, there was a question that came up before in the past, and I forgot to ask this when we spoke before. A lot of people, they'll look at their debt and they'll be like, okay, I'm going to start high to low. But what do you suggest if somebody's like has multiple credit cards, uh, student loans um, from this whole COVID situation, they've gotten behind on a couple of the utility bills. And even with the payment plan, it's still they're still above their the head is still above the head is still underwater. What is something that you recommend when it comes to pay down debt? Well, first of all, let's look at the credit card and see if it's, you know, even. If it's something a credit card that you really uh, you know need to have because um, you have to be careful about can you hear me uh the okay, last sorry. thing you said you have um, to be careful credit, about uh, the utilization of credit cards. cards so okay yeah Okay, so you have to be careful about the utilization on the cards. So you want to pay the cards down because when your cards are over, um, the, the standard is 30%. I have my clients okay. pay theirs down lower than 30%. But any of your cards that are over 30% credit utilization, you need to have a plan to pay those down because you're losing points. You're losing points because yeah. you, are over, you have overutilized the amount of credit on that credit card absolutely yeah yeah um um roz asked a question um she said does each state have its own statute of limitations yes it does okay yes, yes okay does. and how would they find out what what where what the, what their state's limitations are um you can google it um some states have it on their um oh my god yeah, you, you can Google it. I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. It's okay. I know you're over there driving. You're on the move today. Yep, I totally get it. Yeah, so I, it's something that definitely is, is public knowledge. So for uh, Dr. Roz, um, so I keep calling her Dr. Roz. Roz, to answer your question, uh, that's definitely something that's public knowledge. You, you could easily look up you know, and check it out. But with the whole strategy on how to get it down, you know, definitely I would strongly consider to reach out to Natasha and see um, how that how that would work for you once you do find out what your state statute of limitations are, okay? So let's jump to number four, which is learn about uh, responsible credit habits. This is important. Uh, what do you have to say to that, Natasha? Um, learning about responsible credit habits. Well, that just... I mean, you, I don't want to say it's common sense, but that's just something that you want to strive to be doing anyway. So again, that, that goes back to spending responsibly, making sure you know what's coming in, what's going out. 
Um, yeah. You know, not buying stuff just because you want it, but buying it if it's a need, then of course. Um, but sometimes, you know, there are things that we want, some things that, that we like, that we would up doing that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, absolutely true. Just, they, they can wait. Also, yeah, also, too, I tell people if you can't pay cash for something, then especially for like a like gas or something. Mm -hmm. You have to understand when when you swipe your credit card, you're not just paying what you just spent. You're also paying the interest rate on it. Yes, you are. So if you're going to use a gas card or a credit card for gas because, you know, you want to accumulate points or whatever, then I would say make sure that you have the money to pay, put that right back on the card. Like yeah. you shouldn't have a, a payment plan on a gas card. <laughs> you shouldn't be making payments on a gas card every month Yeah, because you're paying interest on it. You That's know, right. if there's a large purchase that you want and if you don't even have half the money for it, I would say don't purchase it. Because again, you are accumulating interest on it and the longer it takes for you to pay it off, the more it costs that, you know, for you to actually buy it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good spending habits just comes with knowing what's going on about what you're spending, not overspending. And not spending just because you have it. Exactly. That's right. Because, if you, you know, you got to make it a habit. You know, we fall into that shiny object effect where we're like, okay, I'm just going to charge it. I'm just going to charge it. And we're like, we, 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 we sometimes, what's the term for it? It's like an NLP term where we will justify, the just like we justify our good habits, we also justify our bad habits too. It's almost mm -hmm. like an addiction. And when you're right. trying to make sure that you're not getting all those phone calls or w running your, your your credit into a hole, you know, you got to just sometimes bite that bullet and say, well, I don't really need this. You know, I could pay for the gas cash. Why do I need uh, to use my card right now? Because even at the gas station, you're spending, you, they're actually charging you at the gas station and they charge you on the back end. Uh, your creditor is actually charging you another interest fee. So it's like, you know, for that full tank, you like you're forking out more money. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it doesn't really, really make sense, you know. So like you said, is is their their business. Their business. <laughs> and that's how it is. So number five is build new credit. Let, let's talk about that. Cause that, that got me a little bit off the rip when it says if we're trying to get out of getting so much credit, why are we want to build new credit? Well, you want to build new credit because um Say, for instance, you have a, a um, an account on your credit report that's been reporting for seven years. Okay. And after seven years, that falls off. Well, then you lose all that history. You, you lose the utilization. You lose points. So you yeah. want to always make sure that, um, first of all, you have enough accounts on your credit report to help build up that um, those points. Yes. Yes. Um, also, you want to build new credit because if you have any derogatory information on your report, you want to build new credit to kind of overshadow that the you know the derogatory information. Especially as as the derogatory information gets older, the new credit, the positive credit that you're building is going to overshadow that. So then it doesn't okay. count against you as much. Um, you know, once it once it gets like twenty four months, past okay. twenty four months. So. Um, yeah, you always want to be making sure you have fresh, not fresh credit all the time, but you want to make sure that you're building up those accounts. Yes. Yes. I totally agree. I have, like, I, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was saying, and then I have a formula for my clients as far as, you know, how many credit cards they should have, how many revolving accounts they should have. And things like that because that helps also with your you know building your credit and your score oh that's good to have and again guys for y'all to connect with natasha um go to new path to it's new path number two freedom right dot com yes yes go to that link so that way you guys can get that as well uh we have a couple questions in the comments um uh, what well, just one but roz uh, mentioned um i have a purse addiction <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a addiction. That's what's your addiction, Tasha? Since we're talking as women, we all have something that we're like, oh my God, I cannot walk past that store because I'm gonna walk in. 
Um, okay, I'm I'm a um, I'm an electronics junkie. Let's just say oh. that I'm a gadget junkie. Yeah. Cool, cool. I like electronics. All right. Now, when I could travel, then you know, traveling. But yeah, I don't have any like real big. Well, I mean that that's big enough. Yeah, that's a big enough. That can get expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I know what to get you for your birthday. So that's always you. You sure uh, move the right direction. <laughs> so, uh, um, um, okay, I want to get her name right, Marcia, or is it Marcia Marsha? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Says I know you gave me the correct pronunciation before. She said, "Does Natasha advocate debt debt credit in lieu of credit cards?" Hmm. It all depends on your financial situation. Okay, that's fair to say. Yeah, and 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 I would have to see, you know, what's going on with your finances in order to say whether one oh, is, debit cards in lieu of credit. Okay, got it, got it. Yes. I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. Hmm. That's a tongue twist. Yes, that definitely. That's an individual answer. It depends on. Your financial, yeah, that's a really right. good answer that you said that. Absolutely. Yeah, because credit cards aren't bad. A lot of people think that having credit cards are bad, and it's not no. bad. Mm -mm. Yeah, so it's that's not. why I say it depends. Depends on what you're using it for. Are you using it for a to build a bridge, or are you using it for a, as 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 a toy, <laughs> or right. using a toy or a tool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. Yes, yes. So they, hey, Doctor Ray, welcome. Hey, Doctor Ray. Doctor Keisha here. Uh, Ross said, if you pay a house or car payment in, in advance, how does that help your credit? Um, again, it depends on your, your whole, your overall credit situation. So it's not a bad thing. It, it's actually not because as we know, you know, those things carry interest with them. So the faster you pay them off, then the less money you're going to pay because you're trying to, you know, um, give it some of the interest, but again, it depends on what your situation is. Like, for instance, I don't like financing cars. I hate financing cars Me too. because Me too. they lose their value. Yeah. So, if I do finance a car, I always pay at least half of the value. You know, so I won't be paying a whole bunch of interest on exactly. it. Exactly. And then I try to pay it off early. But I'm again, kidding. depending on you know your overall credit. Um, profile because if you pay it off and then you have nothing else there to help you with your credit score it could you know push your credit down you could lose points so that's why you have to have that overall profile of your credit to make sure you're maximizing all of your points to get a good score that's depending true. on again you know what the history is if it's positive history or negative history because those true. negative things can really um you know knock you out of a range depending on what it is it's shocking to me i know this is like a sidebar but it's shocking to me how much things people will have on credit i remember one time i just like popped in and walked into a rent center and how i'm like they have a toaster you could rent out i'm like what like the things people finance to me are just i, I just it's just crazy yeah. so, so i think it's really what is you know really if you're going to put something on credit or even put it to where you have to pay monthly for it really is to say well what's more worthwhile the house or, or a car you know what i'm saying or, or right what, like you said those things go down in value you know once you pay off a car for five years it's not even worth half of what you paid really right right i mean if you want to so you, you trade you in to credit, then you finance another car so it's like right. you go you know around this circle you right know? Or yeah. then, or you trade a car in and you're upside down in value, so now you're paying for two cars at one time. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people get caught up in that. But I, for me, I say if if you're going to use credit, use it for an asset. Use it for something that you can make money off of. So a yes. house, you know, if you want to do investment properties, um, you know, then I mean, people use it for you know trips and other things. But again, you don't want the things that aren't making you money to just sit on your credit. Yeah. You want to pay those off as quick as possible. If not, you know, paying it off every, um, at the end of every month or at least mm -hmm. paying the bulk of it off. And again, making sure your, your utilization is below 30%. That's so it's right. not hurting your score. That's right. So that's why people see their scores going up and down 
because they're not paying attention to the utilization. They're not paying attention to the age of the accounts. They're not paying attention to stuff that's falling off because when stuff falls off, that comes with rebuilding credit where you have to, you know, rebuild it, put another account on there to help bring those points back. And it takes time. Yes, it does. It does take yeah. time. That is true. Oh, Marsha, got it. Thank you, love. Hey, Catriel. Sheree says she has a book addiction. That's not bad. Well, some books can be. No, that's not bad. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so Ron said, does she have to quarantine on shopping? <laughs> <laughs> Smart and smartly, if that's a word. <laughs> yeah, just. Now, just, I would ask, how many purses do you buy in a mm -hmm. year? Mm hmm. Yes, Ross, how many purses you got, girl? Yes. Hey, Lita, how are you? All right, let's jump Hi, ladies. to the next question is, oh, that's um the, the last point we want to make is wait. What does that mean to wait? Wait means if you can't afford it, then wait. Wait, wait means, it. yeah. I mean, if, like I said, I know there are things that people want to do, things you like to do. But if it's going to put you in a financial bind, then wait. You know, mm -hmm. if there's a trip you want to take, but you won't have any money when you get there to spend, then <laughs> do you really need to take that trip? You know, right. there's a car you want to buy, but if you can't even afford to put four tires on it or keep the maintenance up on it, do you really need you that need particular it. car? You know, can you downgrade on the type of car that you want? Mm -hmm. And wait until you get into a, a situation where you can't afford to get what you want. But mm -hmm. sometimes you have to wait, you know, and and I hate, you know, some people hate the word settle, but sometimes you have to settle, you yeah. know, um, because, again, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you, you know, car gets repossessed, house foreclosed on because you're trying to live a lifestyle that you can't even afford. That's right. So, yeah, it's like yeah. putting that car before the horse and. You know, right. it's the worst thing when you obtain something and then it gets taken away. Had you waited a year or even sometimes it's less than that, you know, um, mm -hmm. with sacrifice, you know, you can get it. And now it's yours. You don't have to worry right. about anybody coming after you for anything or stressing about paying it and things like that. So waiting is important, but I know it's hard for some of us, but still doing it, you know, it, sometimes I say, well, God didn't have that plan for me right now. Right. Well, and then, you know, you know, just look at the long, look at it in the long run. Um, because like I said, I, when I was going through my issues with my finances, it was just like, okay, what, what can wait, you know, what do I need right now? And really food, clothing and shelter, everything else could wait. I mean, food I was turning down, shelter. yeah, I mm -hmm. was turning down trips that I wanted to go on so bad, mm -hmm. but I'm like, okay. I'm going to have to wait because if I take my money that I'm supposed to be spending, you know, paying my bills with, mm -hmm. then when I come back, we may not have where to live. You know, That's when I come right. back, we may not have a vehicle. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, you have to write delayed gratification. You, you have to. You have to make sacrifices. You yep. have to. And, so have, you know, like I tell people, some of those things will be there. They're not going anywhere. They're not. They're still. Yep. Yeah, and probably by the time you do have enough money to buy it. It may be even less. That has happened to me before where I paid for mm -hmm. something that had initially bought it initially. It would have been like double what I paid, but I actually paid much less. So right. Marsha has a question. Does each time your credit is reviewed uh, negatively impact your credit rating? Th yeah, that's a good question. Anytime somebody views your credit, let me just make sure you're, you're asking the right question, Marsha. Is it when you apply for credit or do you mean when somebody says, oh, we just need to check your credit just to make sure um, but yeah, talk about that as if somebody will approach you and say, we, they're not, it's not actual credit check. They just need to look at your credit history. Does that negatively affect your, your, your points? No, it may go down a point or two. Um, but I mean, it, you, you can regain that point. What you want to be worried about is, you know, the late payments. You want to be worried about the negative stuff that can take your score down like, 20 30 points oh you know those are the things that you want to be worried about but someone reviewing your um credit file even when you go to look at it there's no negative impact on it okay um, yeah and then a lot of people have the question like when you go to apply for a car if you go through the dealership and they run it through their finance their finance could be 
10 different lenders. Yeah. So you'll have all of these. They're trying to get you to get that car. So they'll have like 20 banks or financial, not even banks, but just financial institutions. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. So that could take it down a couple of points. But again, it's not going to impact your score as negatively as, you know, not making your payments on time. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, Marsha was referencing both whether somebody's mm-hmm. going to check your credit just so you, if you're applying for something and review credit. So even the, let's talk about somebody, you know, if you're about to buy something, they're checking your credit for you to see if they qualify. Does that take off more points in the review process? No. Okay. Okay. I no. see that. I understand that. Cause you know, us, us, us black folks be like, why do you want to check that for? <laughs> <laughs> right. And he said it's going to like totally deplete. Like we go from seven to 600. We're like, Oh no, you ain't checking my credit. Right. I, mean, I ain't giving you my social security number. Yeah. Cause but there's the thing. Go ahead. The thing that I do tell people is if you know that down the road, three months down the road that you're trying to get a new car, you're yeah. trying to apply for a house or whatever, you need to check your credit report at least three to four months prior to you applying it. Because if there is anything on there that is not yours, that you need to dispute, that you need to fix, then you have time to do it before your credit report is even pulled. Yes. So if you're not even sure when you go to the cash register of a department store and, they, and you know, they tell you, well, you know, you can save 10% now if you apply for a credit card. If you're not even sure that you can um, get that card, then what is 10% going to do for that purchase really? Because that 10% in comparison to the 20% that's on the balance, once you put the the balance on the card, I mean, it's really not even worth it. It's not. And I I even see places around here in my neighborhood where they'll give you that, that discount on what you're purchasing, whether you get approved or not. It's like an, an incentive to get people to, uh given their information you know what i'm saying just just mm-hmm. for whatever reason i don't like that because still that 15 percent that you discount right. ever actually you know could, you know it could bring down your credit by 10 percent if you know for a fact without for a fact that you're not going to get that you know credit right. line, your line of and, credit right so you're like oh i want to get a discount so let me let me sign up anyway you know a lot right. of people but, do know mean, four times let me just do it anyway Cause you know I'm saving money, but then it's like <laughs> still hit your not. Price. You yeah, but, but you're not. You're not. Yeah, you mentioned something very good about a lot of these. A lot of stores are closing, like Chuck E. Cheese's. I think Cherise put in the group. Uh, TJ Maxx, um, mm-hmm. Jason Penny closed a lot of stores. Sears, um, they've been you know a uh, banker for a while. But with all these stores that have credit cards, like and and people are now thinking, okay, they're closing down the whole company, so. I have a balance. They think, okay, the balance goes away too. <laughs> no. What is your perspective on that, girl? It does not work like that. So <laughs> when the store closes and if it's a store card, then the account is also going to close. You still owe the balance. Yeah. That that store, th- those cards are um, financed through banks. They're not financed from the store. Got it. So, so you still owe that money. Now, the one thing about having a store card and the store closes is that account is going to cause your score to drop once it closes because that's pretty much a dead account. So there's no more utilization on it for you to use. Um, You know, there are no more credit increases on it that's going to help your score. And so that's when you have to rebuild. So you you have to find something that's going to replace that. to replace those points that you lose with that account, especially that account was like an old account or, you know, had a lot of history on it, a lot of good history on it. Now you're going to have to rebuild if you don't have, you know, enough um, credit that can absorb what you've lost, but you will lose, but be prepared to see your credit score go down. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that store closure. Right. Wow. Yep. And, but I mean, you know, it, it, it'll pick back up again. It's that whole credit profile. Yeah. You know, all your other accounts and um, the utilization on those and the history on those. So that's why it's important that you keep, you always keep um, an eye on your credit report. 
Now, the other thing that I wanted to touch on with the credit cards and applying for stuff, be careful who you give your information to. That's right. Especially in these department stores. Yes. Um, and especially over the phone. Yes, um, there's a lot of scams going on. Lots of right. scams going on right now. Lots. A lot of scams. Yeah. And I tell people, even around like the holidays, around Black Friday and Christmas, um, around those times, you know, stores are always asking you at the register, you know, do you want to apply for a credit card to ask for your information? And I had this happen to one of my clients. Well, we, she assumed this is what happened. She applied for a card. And, you know, during the holidays, they have like a lot of temporary workers. Yeah. Well, Whoa. she gave out all her information verbally, and there's somebody behind the counter on their phone. Oh! So, who knows what information that they took? Six if they six, used it, six, if somebody six. else used it, if somebody <laughs> behind them used it. But it's just like, you don't, if, and that's why I tell people, if you need to save 10% that bad, then maybe you really don't need that maybe card. Maybe you don't need that card. That's don't right. Don't do it in the stores. Don't do it in the stores. Be mindful of who you're talking to and who's around you when you're talking. Exactly. Um, There's a lot of fraud going on right now with unemployment claims. Yeah. So I'm telling people now, watch your credit reports. Put a credit monitoring service on your credit file. Because what you don't need is somebody helping you to mess up your credit. That's right. So it's worth paying for that credit monitoring services. Yes. That is an additional fee. It's not something that it, you, you people anybody would just do for free because that's a right. struggle. Yeah. Right. But I mean, most banks offer that. And it may yeah. only be, you know, you may only be able to get one um, actual credit score. Yeah. But most banks, do, they do offer that. So you yeah. need to check with your banks, your credit unions to see if they offer some type of credit monitoring service but, I have one even as a backup because i'm always thinking like you know the banks have millions and millions of accounts if they miss one thing has happened to me before when i was you know at the train station i was mm-hmm. about to go and get a metro card and my card didn't work i was like it's a debit card i had i was like oh my god i had no way of getting home from manhattan it was like the worst day of my life but uh <laughs> right but then too there. Right. But then, too, it's also good to have an independent credit report, um, credit monitoring service, because your banks do have breaches, too. So yeah. um, and then a lot oh, of them yeah. may not offer offer you that recovery. Um, I call it a recovery insurance to where if your information has been breached, then they have like some of some of these services have like a million dollar coverage on yeah. them that they, um, you know, can um, help you out with so just be mindful of that too where you get it from very very mindful that's important so the last thing i want to um us to talk about is um i found this diagram and i know when i shared it with you tasha you was like girl yeah we should definitely show this and i want you to just first explain it and those of you in the, who are in the chat if you have questions about this chart i'm about to show uh please feel free to ask um definitely a good opportunity for you guys to ask and if you want to get more individualized attention, definitely connect with, with Tasha. But this here, uh, what I noticed is uh, the, the five key, integra- in, I'm sorry, five key ingredients that your FISCO score considers. Now, can you go over, can you see this, um, Natasha? Yep. I okay, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you could explain it. Okay, so this is the five factors of your FICO score. And when I say, you know, your whole credit profile, this is what your whole credit profile consist of. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the largest part of your credit score comes from your payment history, Mm -hmm. um, which is 35%. And then the amount of um, the amount of debt, um, which is 30%. So that's why I advise people, you know, make your payments on time, because that's the bulk of your score, just making your payments on time. So when you're not making your payments on time, then that, you know, drops your score. Like you lose a lot of points when you're late on payments. Um, And it could take sometimes up to a year to get those points back. Oh, wow. How, you know, far behind you are in the payments. Um, And then again, the amount of debt. So with the amount of debt, you want to make sure that, even your debt to income ratio, you should not be paying out more 
than you bring in again. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, so the amount of debt. So those two things make up 65%. So when you are doing your finances, just be mindful of, you know, I need to make sure I'm making my payments on time. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you can't make your payments, then call your your lenders and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. Don't just not pay your bills. Mm. Because and then, you know, some people want to go back and be like, well, you know, this was going on after the fact. They don't care what went on 60 days ago. Mm. You need to let them know what's going on right now because they can work with you. You know, they can make some type of arrangement with you. Um, so it does not affect your, your score as much. Um, you know, you can even if, even if you have an option to refinance so you can afford. But again, that depends on what your credit score is. So that's another reason why you want to make sure that you're you keep up with your, your finances because you can leverage things like refinancing, get, getting lower payments on things if you have a good score. Mm-hmm. Um, 15% is the length of history. And this is what I'm talking about when I say um, like people will dispute um, like closed accounts on their credit reports. And it could have positive history on it. Just because it's closed doesn't mean that you should dispute it off of your report because you're not using it anymore. You're using the history. That history is adding points to your credit report. So if you take that card off, what it looks like is to a lender, you've never had any history on paying bills or paying you know, your bills on time or even having a history of somebody else even lending to you like a certain amount of money. So because you erase that history, they may not, um, they may not extend any um, credit to you. So be mindful of just because it's closed doesn't mean it needs to drop off your off of your report before it's um, ready to drop off. Amen. And again, it, if it's negative, again you can rebuild that. Um, so I said there there are ways that you can rebuild that, but. Yeah, that seems to be something that people want to do all the time is take off old accounts and they shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, 10% is new credit. So, again, lenders like to see that you have a mixture um, a mixture of um, credit, which is also the other 10%. So, mm-hmm. the new credit is, you know, there's, there's so many um, years, months and years that you should be applying for new credit. And that's just so, again, a lender can see, okay, you know, you're responsible. Other lenders are comfortable with lending to you. And again, with the whole credit file, then they will be, um, you know, more lenient on lending to you as well. And then the credit mixture, they want to see that you're able to handle different types of accounts. But the main piece is the payment history and the amount of debt that you have that you need to pay attention to. How? There you go. Did this help anybody? Those of y'all who are watching in the chat, uh, please let us know if this has helped you. Do you have any questions about this particular chart? And um, this was actually, you know, when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, okay, this is definitely something that um, I wanted to look more further into because it's more than just, as you mentioned, paying off the debt. This, mm-hmm. All these little entities have a lot to do with your overall score because some people Correct. think, well, I paid. I paid this. I paid off all my debt. Why is it my score is still the same? Or why is it only had gone up twenty points? You know, it's because. Or they, why has it dropped? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can drop too. every day. It's like you. Like I remember when um my son start, just started high school last year, and um I had to tell him like you know you could go to school every day. I mean we're always gonna have perfect attendance. I'll make sure they go to school. But <laughs> right. it's like, are you doing your homework? Are you, you know, passing your test? Or you now it's like they, they this anti bullying thing, they score you on that. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you're not, you know, bullying people. But yes, let us know. Deborah said, yes, it was very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, lots of info to process and miss to dispel. Great. So we dispelled some miss today. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. 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 So Tasha, um, now that we're about to draw to a close and I appreciate you hopping on the show, 
this is definitely useful information. I would love to have you back on. But I know you have a lot of new stuff going on behind the scenes. And if you could mm-hmm. just explain um, to the audience, um, like if they can't reach out to you, what would be the next step for them, for those who need your help? Okay, so I do do consultations and they're paid consultations. They're not free consultations. Only because when when I talk to someone on the <laughs> phone, I... <laughs> yeah, because when I talk to you on the when when I talk to someone about their credit, I can't really give you clear guidance if I don't see what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we pull your credit report and I do a full analysis on your credit report and tell you the areas where you need that you need to address. Yeah. Um you know, I um provide services as far as credit repair. I also have a do-it-yourself software that's launching on the 1st of July. Um, right now it is 297 and that comes with six months of access. It has the letters in it, it has videos in it, and um, I'm also giving you 30 minutes of my time for free each month. So if you get stuck, we can get on the phone and I can tell you which direction to go in. But you're pretty much doing everything yourself. Um, so that's what's up and coming right now and you also have you said those of y'all who need her help you also mentioned that you have a service that they can get your help too right they have services that i can do it for you um again just jump just make a um an appointment with me and we can talk about that service because again i have to see your credit file Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's not even worth me doing for you. If it's just something where you just need to rebuild credit, I can give you the resources for that and you can do it on your own. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's great because, you know, you and I talked about this before and we talked about several ways to do what you do. But what it boils down to for what you're what you provide is it can't be done in a group. You know what I mean? Because people are literally opening up their personal information, their history, and you have to have a a high sense of integrity on your end. So just to let you guys know, it it will be an individual thing when you're working with Natasha, you know, and and she don't want to lose the license and sort of certifications that she's had gained throughout the years. So keeping it to where it's more of a one-on-one experience that each and every every person has, it's going to definitely be valued once you work with her. You know what I'm saying? Because I see how slimy some of this you know, financial education, financial coaching gets where, you know, everybody sort of knows your business. It really is nobody's business, you know, right. what, what your financial history is because, you know, you're not a bad person because you're in debt. You're not a bad person because your credit is not where it needs to be. You know, like I right. said, I was, was never taught this. I was never taught this in school and I was never taught this at home about credit and and saving and things like that, you know? So this is now you, it's like, we gotta, you're helping us reprogram our brains really on not just building our credit, but again, to create proper financial habits that we have to stick to it and stick with for the rest of our lives. So our children do not repeat the mistakes that we repeated, Uh you know? So that's what it is. And, 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 you know, it's just being smarter and wiser. So thank you so much, Tasha, for joining me today. So appreciate you, girl. I know you're on a move and you have a lot going on and thank you guys so much for joining us in the chat. So listen, I always say, listen, learn, take action. Reach out to Natasha Davis at newpathtofreedom.com. Schedule a consultation with her. And let's start hitting the ground running with your financial future, with your financial freedom. All right, everyone. Uh, Natasha, you have anything else you want to say? No, that's it. Thank you so much. Think- we summed it all <laughs> up. We summed it all up. All right, love. I'll see you all later, right. mom. Okay. okay good night. Everyone. And you Me guys too. have an amazing, awesome night. As always, don't forget, get out there and dominate because it's time to design a life that you, in fact, deserve. Till next time.